Ladies and gentlemen, as promised, here's the video talking about the easiest healers to play in Pugs for Dragonflight Season 3. I recently made a video that you can watch talking about what it takes to be a good healer in Pugs in World of Warcraft. And one of the main points there was to pick a good class for Pugging if you don't have a preference, of course. So now we're going to rank the healers based primarily on how good it is to play in Pugs. As you can probably guess from the footage, we're starting with the Restoration Shaman and this is one of the classes that is Reactive Healer. This is actually very important for Pugs because once the damage happens, then you heal it. You're not a proactive healer that sets up its healing. And since there's less coordination in Pugs, does a lot more unpredicted damage, being a reactive healer is actually a huge plus in Pugging. On top of that, the Shaman actually brings a lot to the table. You have a very short ranged interrupt and in general you are a ranged class, which is not always a plus, especially this season where some fights require you to move a lot. But you do bring Bloodlust to the table, you have AoE stun with your cap totem, you have AoE knockup with your thundershock, and then a whole bunch of useful cooldowns like Spirit Link totem, Ascendance, very solid damage overall which recently got buffs along with some healing buffs as well. And considering that the learning curve for the Shaman is not that steep, this is actually a very easy S tier. And yes, as you probably know, I'm a bit biased because this is my favorite class, but I think this is definitely one of the top recommendations if you want to heal in Pucks. Moving on to the Priest, it's actually a class that can have two different specs to heal on, which is a big plus because if you don't like one of them, you can always switch to the other. Starting with the Holy Priest, which is actually the class that I've played the least this expansion, it recently got huge buffs to healing and made it very valuable in M+, as it was lacking a little bit before that. It is a reactive healer, which is a big plus, the learning curve is also not that steep, there are some cool talents and cool synergies inside with a guardian spirit which is kind of like an immune dead external. And yes, it lacks a direct interrupt. It is a little bit squishier than some of the other healers, but at the end of the day with the recent buffs, this is also going easily into the S tier if you're only focused on pugging and you're looking for the path of least resistance. However, we cannot say the same for the sister spec, the discipline priest. It did get a recent rework, which made it relatively easy to play and learn, but this is probably one of the harder proactive healer specs, which means that you need to do a setup before you start healing. And although it's a lot of fun to play, because you actually do damage to heal, which is not something that's typical for some of the other specs that we mentioned so far, it feels really bad if you're not prepared to heal the damage or if somebody takes a mechanic in the face and you have to react instantly. And don't get me wrong here, it's actually a very nice class to play right now with the tier set and everything. Some of the highest keys on life servers right now being pushed are with a disciplined priest. But from my personal experience, although it's a lot of fun, it becomes exponentially harder to play this class the less organization you have in your group and the less skill the players inside possess. So from a bug perspective, I'll have to put this into a high C or low B tier. Moving on to my favorite Holy Paladin class, this is actually one of the reactive classes, but it has some things that we have to consider before we rank it. It is a melee class that manages two different resources. You have your mana and you have your holy power, which makes the learning curve a little bit harder than some of the other classes. It does bring a lot to the table because you have pretty good utility for M+, bringing battle rest, interrupt, blessing of protection, blessing of freedom, pretty short cooldowns for healing, which you have at your disposal almost all the time. But one of the main downsides is probably the fact that it was too powerful last year and now it got nerfed and changed to the point where playing it is not that satisfying, the tuning is probably not where it's supposed to be so you have to press a lot of buttons to heal. And if it didn't feel that bad playing it, I would probably put it into high A but right now I think it has to go down to the B tier. A little bit of tuning will probably make miracles to the class but right now it has to just be stuck in there. Next up we have the Mist River Monk and this is actually the tier for the Mist River Monk as it saw a lot of love not only by buffs and changes but also by amazing 
tier set bonus. It is a melee class and it has relatively shorter range than the H power which makes it feel really bad. But overall you can consider this to be a reactive healer although most of the healing that you're going to do is going to be smart healing. Combined with short but powerful cooldowns and you can even play it somehow like a proactive healer if you consider the G harmony from the tier set bonus to be acting sort of like a ramp. It is definitely not the easiest class to learn how to play but it's not one of the hard ones either and with the current tuning and the current tier set bonus this is almost into the S tier but I'm going to put it into high A. Let's also mention that the classes that are considered meta this season are Restoration Druid, Mist River Monk and Disc Priest so this is basically the highest ranked class if you consider the puck aspect and the meta together. Next on the list is the Preservation Evoker which is one of the most fun classes to play as it's very different than everything else that we have available. The tuning is not horrible at the moment as well. And as a Voker, you bring a lot to the party having Bloodlust, a lot of CC defensives, very solid DPS along with the HPS. But there's a lot to be said in the Pug world even if we discard the Augmentation Evoker in the game. One of the biggest issues that you're going to have as a Preservation Evoker in a Pug is the short range compared to every other healer. And the fact that even if you position correctly, if you have range in your group and they're not standing where they're supposed to be standing, you're not going to be healing them for a lot. Your spells are mainly reactive although there's a very big proactive part with the empowering of the spells and some of the other ones like Temporal Anomaly that you need to precast. Which is quite fine for pugs as they're very powerful but the main problem is that almost every spell that you have has a cooldown. So dealing with unexpected damage is not as bad if you have the cooldowns available but if you're trying to pre-plan and then something unexpected happens so you waste the cooldown to fix somebody's mistake and then you need to fix another mistake for the hunter that was not standing in your dream's bread before that, things just ramp up out of control pretty quickly and situations like that could feel pretty pretty bad. So although the class is a lot of fun to play, we're not ranking them here by the fun to play but how good are they in pugs, I'll probably have to put it down somewhere in the C tier around the Discipline Priest. And that leaves us with the Restoration Druid which again is one of the most fun classes to play because the gameplay style is very unique. You're shapeshifting into different forms, if you want to DPS your DPS rotation is probably more complicated than some of the DPS classes. But when it comes to healing you're again a proactive class that needs to set up all the halts so he can ramp and heal big incoming damage. The new addition to the Groove Guardians kinda helps with spot healing and unexpected damage but you don't have powerful spells that you can just spam to top somebody off. You're very dependent on the tank positioning the mobs correctly and not moving them too much around. You do have battle res but then your CC is not that easily accessible as you need to shift into other forms and your interrupt is the same, not very easily reachable in your talent tree. And by the way just to mention that the talent tree has some very weird choices that you have to make, definitely some space for optimization there as well. And at the end of the day again very fun class to play but probably one of the hardest ones to learn and execute correctly. But due to the current tuning I think it's safe to put this definitely above the Preservation Evoker and the Discipline Priest. So from a pugging perspective the Restoration Druid goes into B tier. Alright so this is the final list, again this is only from pugging perspective. How easy and how powerful are those classes to play in pugs not in organized groups. And with all things considered let me know do you agree with this and what is your preference when playing in pugs. Also keep in mind that there's no such thing as unplayable class in pugs, you can easily play as high keys as you want on Discipline Priest and Preservation Evoker as well. If you enjoy the class and you like the gameplay style definitely go for it as at the end of the day the most important part is to have fun. Do check my video with the tips on what it takes to be a pug healer, link is in the description of this video. I'll talk to you in the next one, until then happy healing, bye bye and take care.